So you may have heard that your game doesn't need an entity component system, but what are the alternatives? Well, let's have a look at a couple today. The first and the one that I have covered in the Metroidvania section of program video games, which is the course that I run, is the Megastruct. So the Megastruct is really simple. Basically, you just put all of your data into the entity, and then you put the entities into an array, and then you iterate over the array when you need to update stuff. And the advantage of this is that it's dead simple. Disadvantage is performance. However, depending on the type of game, that may or may not be a huge consideration. If you don't have hundreds or thousands of entities on the screen at once, then it may never be an issue for you. Now you may want to pull things out and put them into separate arrays. I'm not really going to cover that here, but that is an optimization strategy that you can do. Now something that I've found really useful is if your language supports it, you set up an entity ID as a distinct type. So in Odin, I've set it up as a distinct int or sometimes a U64. And the advantage of this is that you can't accidentally pass an entity ID, which might just be an index, into a function from another system that uses ints as indexes or ints as IDs as well. So if you have some other system um, and you create something that has an ID, which is an integer, you may pass it into your entity get function and then you get what you think is a reference to an entity and then you start changing the data and because you got it by pointer, you can like overwrite the data and stuff. And then your data just gets all crazy and you have all these horrible bugs. So something really cool about this is if you try to pass anything that's not an entity ID in, like an int from another system, it will just fail to compile. So that's really useful. So your API for the entity system might look something like this. And you'll notice that the entity get procedure in this case returns a pointer to an entity. That means that you have to use this every time you want to update something. Well, you don't have to, but because if we go back a couple of slides, we've used a dynamic array here. That means the array can grow at any time or not any time, but when we create an entity, right? So we create an entity, it might grow because it might need to reallocate the memory to a space with a larger slot of memory. And when we call entity get, if we save those pointers and then we call entity create and the array gets moved, well, our pointers are going to be invalidated and we're going to have garbage. So it's important that if you use this system and you use pointers like this, you just use the ID and you get it, uh, you get using this function each time you want to change something. Now there's a particular scenario that can happen, whether you use pointers directly or whether you use um, entity IDs, as we just went over, if the slot can be reused. So if the entity ID is just an index, then something dies and then you reuse that slot and you have some other data structure that saved that entity index because it was following it in this example, then there's going to be a problem. So for example, one of you guys dies and then a new enemy spawned on the other side of the map. And, but that guy who died had someone following him. And now that that entity is going to go all the way to the other side of the map and follow this new entity that uh, just got spawned, even though that's not the behavior that you want. So one way around this is to use something called generational indices. So basically every time you create an entity, whether you add it to the end of the array or whether you reuse a slot, you increase this generation. And then when you save uh, a follow in this case, you also put the generation in there. So then you can check, okay, not just the ID, but also the generation. And if they don't match, then that's not a valid behavior and you can just cancel it. Okay. And finally, I want to go over just not even having entities. So uh, for a game, you probably know all of the variables that you're working with, especially if you're doing a small indie game, you might not even need to have an entity system at all. Like this, for example, could be a platformer or a roguelike or something. You've got spikes, you've got doors, you've got rooms, you've got enemies, you've got a player. You don't need a, this generic like entity type because you've got all the things that you need and you can just specify those. So that is certainly an option and it's often the best option for small games, especially if you're solo or if you, actually it doesn't really matter if you're solo, but especially if you know the design of what you're doing and if you're not expecting to, you know, give your engine to someone else for them to make something arbitrary, right? So you can be really specific and then you can do really specific, you can make really specific code and really specific optimizations and really specific shortcuts. Um, so yeah, definitely consider not even using entities at all. All right, that's pretty much it. Just a short video to show some alternatives to ECS. If this kind of stuff interests you, 
check out my site, programvideogames.com. If you go to slash free, there's a free course where you can learn uh, Odin and Raylib. Really nice combination, I think, to put together. So yeah, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.